Hello, and welcome to the film valuation. Basically, because of the coronavirus, we've had to adjust quite a few things to go online, including our film valuation. The practical, we probably won't be doing practicals anytime soon, so we'll have to probably come up with some videos for that. I'm going to be talking fairly quickly on this. We've got about 15 minutes to go over the film valuation of the shoulder and the scapula. So this is going to replace what we usually do in class in terms of looking at our films and me kind of explaining some of the anatomy, what you should look for, uh, what uh, borders um, we need to see from side to side and top to bottom on each one of these images. We have to overcome quite a few things here, including the terrible lighting, fluorescent lighting above, boring background, voices randomly coming from the hallway. So I'm doing this at work, so we'll just have to kind of get through it the best we can. So let's get started. Um, first view we're looking at is an AP shoulder. It looks like neutral rotation of the humeral head. We want to see on our AP sh uh, shoulder is three things. We want to see our clavicle here. We want to see our scapula here, and then the head of the humerus. The shoulder girdle is made up of two things. It's going to be made up of the clavicle and the scapula, but the shoulder is actually made up of this third portion here, which is the head of the humerus. We're going to use a 10 by 12 cassette. It's going to be in transverse, so it needs to go in side to side. You're going to leave your collimation open pretty much at 10 inches top to bottom of almost all your patients. Side to side, there is an opportunity to collimate a little bit if you have a patient that is a little bit more narrower through the thorax area. Medial border, we're going to start with that. The head of the clavicle needs to be all the way on there. So if you're aligned down the mid sagittal plane, the edge of your image should get with your light field down through the middle of the chest. So what you want to see is you want to see about half of the vertebral bodies going across here, which will ensure that you get the entire head of the clavicle. If we go over towards the other side, you need to see the tubercle towards the outside, which is typically going to be the greater tubercle. You want to see the entire head of the humerus going across on here. So side to side, you don't need to get all the way to the soft tissue, but you do need to get some of the soft tissue to ensure that this part of the bone is on there. Top to bottom, we want to Go towards the top here of the clavicle. Um, typically, the most superior portion is going to be either the uh, AC joint, right where the chromium and the clavicle meet. Sometimes, towards a little bit more towards the medial side, you might have this portion here. Everybody's clavicle is shaped a little bit different, but mostly it goes towards the outside. Um, sometimes, the most superior portion is going to be the superior angle of the scapula, which you see here. You don't really see it poking through. It's almost in line with the top of the clavicle in this particular angle. Inferiorly, what you want to see is the inferior angle of the scapula. This is the lowest point that should be on there. You don't need anything below that, but you do need the kind of the tip of that um, scapula towards the bottom of your image. What you should notice here is that you will see the entire length of the clavicle going across. You'll see the acromion, which is this portion right here of the scapula. See this little portion here is going to be the coracoid. Superior angle here. This will be your medial border, your lateral border, and your superior border is going to extend from the superior angle to the coracoid process. Here you have your glenoid clap cavity, and you'll have your neck going across here. So those are your port, uh, parts of the scapula. Head of the humerus should be all the way on there. You're going to get probably about a third to a quarter of the uh, body of this humerus as well. Marker should be towards the outside on here. There's always some room to put it on here because of the basic shape of the trapezius muscle. So the best place to put it would be upper outside corner of your image. Down here would probably be the worst place to put it because it'll be inside the anatomy if you do put it down too low there. So we look at this image. This is a, another AP shoulder. Doesn't have the entire clavicle. Doesn't have the inferior angle on there. So not a good AP shoulder. What we're showing it to you, though, for is for this portion right here. If you look at this right here, this is your greater tubercle. Uh, we covered this a little bit with the humerus, but the greater tubercle is what you need to see. And this is what you get when you turn your hand palm out in a true anatomic position. What that does is it gets the greater tubercle in the proper area and also brings the lesser tubercle right through here. So this little density that you see here is your lesser tubercle. Our next one will show an internal rotation. So this one, as you turn the palm from external rotation towards the body and then turn it out the opposite way so that the palm is actually facing lateral now. So what that does is that moves the greater tubercle that was here towards the inside of the bone here 
but it brings out this point right here, which is your lesser tubercle. So you'll see this kind of little edge or point right around the glenoid cavity. And this is indicative of a internally rotated shoulder. If you look at this, this looks more like an ice cream cone. If you get this whole head of the humerus, pretty much looking at a kind of a lateral look at it, and then it's tapered right across here. If you look back at our AP internal rotation, or external rotation, I'm sorry, is that you'll have more of a kind of a puppy dog appearance. So if you look at this right here, this would be the eye. This is this little nose or muzzle. This is this little ear kind of towards the back on here. So students tend to remember it a little bit when they think of the puppy dog or the ice cream cone. Our Y view is basically uh, a lateral view of the scapula, but it's an oblique position of the body. So as we look at it here, this is your Y that's being formed here. So the chromium, this portion here, this part right here is gonna be your coracoid. And then this with the body or sh uh, body of the scapula is going to be the Y or long axis part of your Y view on here. Now this, view here, not the best view, it's not centered properly, it should be centered right over the body of the scapula, so we've got way too much of the inside or medial portion of the body on here. In terms of positioning, it's a pretty decent Y view. You've got the body away from the thorax, which would, is what we want. We've got the clear Y being formed going across here with the head of the humerus, basically at the bottom of that Y, um, in terms of that little V shape before it turns into the Y. Marker should be towards the outside, this one's centered a little bit uh, too high, or too low, I'm sorry. Uh, we've got superior angle of the scapula, pretty close to the top edge here, but we do have plenty of room from our inferior angle down to the bottom here. So it should have been centered up just a little bit more going across on that. Um, Rotation-wise, we'll get into the rotation and probably, it's a little hard to kind of cover the rotation now, but if you have any part of the body over the, thorax, basically the patient was rotated. So all you have to do is just check where the humeral head is. The humeral head is out in this area here, and what you need is you need to move the humeral head towards the medial side, which means you need to get them in a more lateral position. The humeral head is kind of overlapping the thorax, so that means they're a little bit too flat and you need to kind of rotate them the opposite direction on there. We get into a Grashi or a Grashi or Grashi view. This is basically a true AP of the glenoid cavity going across on here. So on this one here, you should see this without any superimposition of the humeral head going across on there. So we're really looking at this space going across on here. And that's really all we need to see. Uh, we do need to obviously see part of the humerus and a little bit of this area, but it shouldn't be open as much as our AP view here because we don't need to have the entire scapula on there. We just need to focus on this area. So what we're doing on our AP view is this is what you should see on your AP. You should see this kind of little oval or kind of teardrop look going across on here. What we're doing when we get to our Grashi view is we're trying to get that turned of the body so that we can get that as open as possible. So what we're looking at here, let's see if I can find something. Here is that the coracoid will go over this space just a little bit on here. That's perfectly acceptable, but we should open up this space the best we can on here. You should look at your external or internal, whichever one you happen to be doing, and look from this space to the ribs. Okay? This will tell you how much space that you have to work with here. So we've got quite a lot of space to work with here. So we could turn this patient, because it is a little bit more oval, probably the 45 degrees. Um, we could probably go up to like 50 degrees and still not have it overlap the ribs. Um, if you don't turn it enough, what's going to happen is that this oval will just shrink just a little bit more and become a little bit more narrow. If it's really circular, if it's more round than oval, that means you probably have to oblique your patient a bit more than normal. So probably closer to that 45 to 50 degrees. Um, the range is pretty much 35 to 45 degrees for most patients. Our axillary view. Um, our axillary view is going to be basically a view to tell us if there's any type of dislocation going across on that. Now you can see dislocations on other views as well, but this one specifically is for dislocations. You can see our lesser tubercle up here. Our greater tubercle is going to be towards the bottom. This is going to be our chromium, which is going to come across and go right over the neck and part of the head of the humerus. And then our glenoid cavity right towards the bottom. 
look at this. This just shows representative what I just talked about. Just kind of outlined a little bit more so that you can see it a little bit easier on this one. So, not a terribly difficult view. This is typically a tabletop view that's done on like a 10 by 12 with the patient leaning over and we'll show you those positions in just a minute. This is our AP view of the shoulder with external rotation. What's good about this is that the patient's back is flat against there. There's a few things that are terrible though. The amount of light field above here is not good. It looks like it's a 10 by 12 vertical image, which it shouldn't be if you look at the cassette here. This should be a transverse cassette going across on here. Notice that his entire clavicle is not on there all the way. So we need to get all the way over from the midline or mid-sagittal plane all the way to the outside. Outside line is good. Inside line, terrible. Top line, also bad. This needs to be low enough so that we get the um, inferior edge of the scapula on there, which sits at about T7. one here just shows kind of how the Y view looks. You're going to kind of skim the body from the back side. So it's going to be in a PA position. So it's either going to be RAO or LAO. Um, this one is showing a true Y view with no angle. The outlet view we're going to show you has a 15 degree angle going down. It's just going to push the head of the humerus down a little bit more in the Y space, but we still basically the same position on there. Let's see what else we have here. Our AP scapula we want to get to. So let's put this in here. Oops, sorry. Make a few modifications here. So as we look at our AP scapula image, basically our AP scapula just wants to get basically an AP of the scapula on there. That means we do not need to get the entire clavicle going across on there. This position is basically just going to be an AP, just basically with the hand in kind of a reverse salute position up by the head here. You can see that the head of the humerus is now going sideways along with the body going across on there. We're just going to kind of, that's going to angle the scapula out a little bit more so that we can see a little bit more of the surface area going across on here. We don't do scapulas as much as we do shoulders on there, but that's basically how you do the AP scapula. See what else can I cover here? This is also our grassy view going across on here. So you can see that the patient is pretty much at a 45 degree angle. Their hand just across their body here, um, just across on their stomach really. Uh, field size, a little bit smaller than that. Obviously the more light field you have at the top here, the worse image that you're gonna get. So if you look at this image here, You can see that the coracoid is pretty much burned out going across on here. So if it's burned out, we're not going to see much going across on there if your light field is open all the way here. You're just generating too much scatter radiation, just just dirtying up your image a bit. There are approximately about 35 shoulder positions that Merrill's mentions, but we're only covering a few on here. There's obviously going to be some things that we just don't have time to cover, um, like the Velpo and a few different axillary views, like the West Point view. There are different ways to get the axillary view. So that's one area that you should know how to do. A couple different views, including kind of the inferior superior view, which if we ever get back to class, we'll kind of cover that in class. Um, this will give you at least a basic knowledge of the film evaluation and kind of what we're looking at. I'll review it, make sure it's okay. Um, it's not gonna be perfect, but it should do um, for our situation right now. So if you have questions about this film evaluation, certainly let me know. All subsequent film evaluation should be about this length, about 15 minutes or less, um, to kind of go over specific body parts. And we'll get those posted up so that you can kind of review those and hopefully be ready to do them when you get back to school or most likely the clinic first and see how it goes. Not a terribly difficult exam, but the Y view is a bit challenging for most students, as you'll find out. Um, we'll give you some tips and tricks on that as we move along through the course. So, thank you and good luck.